Cape Cosmic is a new Netflix animated series created by Craig McCracken. You probably all know him as the creator of Powerpuff Girls, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and Wander Over Yonder. Rob Branzetti, who created My Life as a Teenage Robot and directed much of Gravity Falls, was also a lead part in this series. Also, McCracken's wife, Lauren Faust, the creator of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and even Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls, all have various writer's credits throughout this series. So there are some big names involved in this show for sure. The story follows Kid. Yeah, his name's just Kid. An excitable young boy who's a massive fan of superhero comic books. One day he finds a crashed alien spaceship that has left behind five powerful stones. Following his favorite comic book storylines, Kid turns these stones into rings that grant superpowers. Kid takes the green ring that allows him to fly and he tries to share the other rings with people from around his small desert town to form a superhero team. Though the ones who end up with the rings, his grandpa Papa G, teenage girl Joe, little girl Rosa, and even a cat named Tuna, aren't really the superhero team that Kid was hoping for. Soon, alien threats from around the universe head to Earth to steal the cosmic stones, so it's up to Kid and his team of unlikely, and completely unprepared, superheroes to save the day. Now when you read the plot out like that, it sort of sounds like a pretty basic premise, right? But they actually do a lot to make the story really interesting. First of all, this is nothing like McCracken's other shows. Aside from some of the designs and the focus on the superheroes, this is very different from anything else he's worked on before. Kid Cosmic has an entirely linear story. It's like a miniseries, basically. Every episode bleeds into the next and there really isn't a second of filler in the whole show. Surprisingly too, there are a lot of plot twists and character developments that change the course of the series regularly throughout its short 10 episode run so far. What really makes this show intriguing is the protagonist, Kid. He's a comic book fan, thrown into a real life comic book adventure, but real life is nothing like a fictional book. Nothing ever really goes Kid's way, and despite yearning so badly to be a superhero, he's the worst at it compared to his unlikely partners. Even the 6 year old toddler is better than him at fighting aliens. The story ends up rolling into an emotional arc focused on Kid. He grew up lonely and he's pretty envious of the other's abilities, so when things don't go his way he gets really upset, just like a real kid would. Despite the very cartoonish visual style and the base scenario of the series, it's actually really grounded and it treats its characters pretty realistically. I don't think anyone would go into this show expecting to get the type of story that it actually gives you. I get vague Captain Underpants or even Pajama Sam vibes from Kid's character. He's an ambitious young superhero fanboy who, at the end of the day, is just a kid. You could tell a lot of McCracken's childhood feelings and interests were put into this series. Similar to how with Captain Underpants you can obviously tell that those books were written by somebody who grew up a huge comic book fan. The pacing in Kid Cosmic gets going really quickly. The direction of the show's story changes pretty drastically a handful of times throughout this short 10 episode season. And that's something I always like to see. It keeps you on your toes and you get easily invested. A good example is how there's a point in the show where a character briefly sees a vision of the future, and I saw that and I thought like, oh okay cool, so that's just like foreshadowing for the final episode of the whole show or the season finale or a cliffhanger or something. But no! The next episode they mention that vision, and that vision becomes the premise of the show, because the characters start to work to make sure that that vision doesn't happen in reality. And when that vision actually ends up happening in the series, it's in like the third before last episode. It's so common for shows these days to build up a story with either no payoff or payoff that takes way too long with tons of detours to different story arcs. But Kid Cosmic is straight to the point the whole time and I really appreciate that. Even though almost every cartoon nowadays tries to tell a continuity heavy story, you very rarely see a series as direct and linear as Kid Cosmic. So the story and pacing were definitely the best things about this series to me. Every episode left me excited to see what would happen next. Even just the way they end the episodes by showing the title card and then playing a quick little theme song before cutting to credits was a really cool idea. It always helped build anticipation and sort of make it feel like you just close the back page of a comic book and need to move on to the next exciting issue. I'm sure you can tell from these screenshots that the show has a very cool art style. It goes for a retro aesthetic, so I guess it's sort of a 1950s animation aesthetic, but with more detailing similar to a retro comic book. The show's world and music has a lot of retro tech and sound going on in it too. The show does a great job of creating a very unique vibe. With some of the alien designs, and even the choices in voice actors, you can tell that this is a Craig McCracken cartoon, but it does still have a different art style than his usual shows. I think just the one thing missing here in this show is more interesting animation. Wander Over Yonder, for example, well, much of that show isn't really that memorable to me, aside from the second season, but the animation in that show is really amazing. 
It's flash animated, and yet it has this super zany, bouncy movement at all times. There's a lot of diversity in the storyboard composition too. I think Kid Cosmic could definitely benefit from having that sort of style in its animation. Like yeah, Kid Cosmic is supposed to be retro and grounded, so the sort of plain visual compositions work, but it just isn't all that visually interesting sometimes. They do that thing where some of the animation has an intentional low frame rate so that it looks more comic booky, you know, like what Spider-Verse does. But I think more fluid motion would fit the show's style better, actually. It's weird too, because it seems like they only do the low frame rate thing, like, sometimes. I think they could have gone farther with the animation. It should have been more bouncy and goofy. Even though that's not really how the show's tone is, I, I think it would help it visually. But with that said, I do love all the character designs. There's a really cool diversity. All the main cast look pretty iconic, and some of the aliens they come up with are really cool, even if they're just on screen for a few seconds. The voice acting is great from everyone too, though it was a little weird to me that they got Grey Griffin to voice like every single adult female character. That was distracting to me. Tom Kenny is in here, because of course he is, and his role as one of the aliens was hilarious. His character and Kid were probably my favorites in the whole series. There's actually some more mature stuff in this show than usual. Like, most episodes will have quite a few light swear words. They'll say things like damn or hell. You know, that's not really life-changing, but not even regular show got to use those words, you know? They kind of just got to say, like, suck and freaking. So somehow, Kid Cosmic ends up being rated TVY7 despite using some mature-ish language. There's also just a lot of great dark comedy. Like, a lot of visual indications of, like, future visions where all the characters just die and like you see their corpses or them fighting off the aliens and like literally just killing the aliens. One of my favorite things was uh, Papa G's superpower. He can make clones of himself so there ends up being a lot of jokes where his clones are just getting killed off in horrible ways like they're just using them as meat shields. I think all that's really funny. The slight increase in maturity that this show has definitely helps it feel unique and even helps it feel realistic really. Well, the language does anyways. A lot of the ways that the characters talk is pretty realistic. Overall, Kid Cosmic was a very pleasant surprise to me, and it might end up being the sleeper hit of the year. It doesn't seem like it's that popular, so I'd encourage everyone to check it out if it seems interesting to you. It is getting a second season, but I think it could have easily ended being just this one season. It could have been a perfect little miniseries, though I am excited to see what the future holds for it. The way the first season ends implies to me that the next season will be seeing even more really cool character designs and locations. So if you're a fan of superhero stories, sci-fi, or just cartoons in general, don't miss out on this one. It may literally have the word kid in the title, but I promise that this show is something that anyone of any age could easily enjoy and get invested in. In particular, I'd say if you were a fan of Wander Over Yonder, I think you'll really like this series, since it has a similar focus on cool aliens, and it tells a linear story the same way that Wander's final season does. I do think the animation could be a bit better, but the fact that the series is so straight to the point and concise makes it really stand out to me, and makes it worthy of a high rating. A minorly interesting thing about this show that I noticed is how, during the credits, it's labeled as a Craig McCracken cartoon, almost like he has his own production branding now. How cool would it be for Kid Cosmic to be the first in a long string of totally original miniseries created by him? It's getting another season, so maybe that's not the case, but wouldn't it be cool for McCracken and other legacy cartoon creators to just go out and make like a dozen new shows back to back for streaming services? That's probably unlikely, but that would be sweet. We are at a point now where most cartoons want to tell linear stories, but they're stuck in the usual western format where they'll need to have like a billion episodes to be marketable. Streaming services are built for binge watching, so mini cartoons like Kid Cosmic work perfectly. I really hope we get more like it in the future. If you've watched Kid Cosmic already, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. And let me know too if you're a big fan of McCracken's other shows. I don't have too much memory of Powerpuff Girls or Fosters, but I remember really liking the second season of Wander Over Yonder. Overall, I did just really love that show's art style. But the second season had a cool gimmick and tone. It kind of stinks that it ended on a bit of a cliffhanger and then it was totally cancelled. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to know when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, and super special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Support me on Patreon and you'll be able to submit video topics, see exclusive behind the scenes content, and help me keep this channel going. Also follow me on Twitter and TikTok for special updates.